trace back a little bit in time your memory of making Salam Bombay, the, the, the technique or the, the, the idea of using actors who weren't all trained actors. I came to cinema as an actor first, uh, not as an actor on cinema, but I was an actor on stage in India uh, for many years, uh, with this, studying with disciples of Peter Brook and Rutowski and um, traveling theater, political theater. And um, I came to this country on a scholarship to pursue acting, but was not very uh, moved by the apolitical nature of the theater at Harvard, where I got a scholarship in Cambridge in Massachusetts. And, and therefore, kind of stumbled into documentary filmmaking. I used to work at La Mama every summer here, but back in school I had to do something that they offered me, so I, I, I studied documentary. And I have a theory uh, about famous people that I admire, is to not, never meet them, because you get uh, disappointed often, uh, and, uh, and, uh, or to meet them when I have something to offer them. In your work, in your navigation of the industry and the press, and, and uh, questioning. Do you get that a lot? You know, in the sense of how does you, how does your work reflect an Indian sensibility? Do you feel you have to prove something in the sense of as you go, uh, your touch, or can you tell any story at any time, anywhere, about any country? Well, no. I mean, uh, I feel I have a very. Um, I am come. I, I come from the independent mainstream, and, and there's a. I mean, independent from the mainstream, but uh, wanting the mainstream, always wanting to sell tickets, you know, sell, put bums on seats, as I say, uh, and uh, not wanting to be precious about it. But at the same time, I used to say um, that I never wanted to be the ambassador of my country because it's a lonely proposition. And to be an ambassador, you have to engage in diplomacy, and I can't bear diplomacy. <laughs> I, I, I like to say, say what I believe, and I don't like to please everyone, and I think it's really boring to try and please everyone. And uh, that's what diplomats must do. And uh, I refused to do that, but it was a, uh, but it's weird that in the course of these years of making cinema, I have of course become unwittingly, even though I said I wasn't going to, uh, a person who represents at least uh, an India uh, or a subcontinent to, to the Western world. Yeah, and when, right. when I'm offered other Hollywood stuff, and I'm offered it uh, sometimes and often, uh, then I ask myself this critical question that sometimes, that most times I really listen to, which is, can anyone else make this film? You know, and if I can come up with an idea that anyone else can make this film, then I really shouldn't make it. Um, you said something very interesting about uh, what narrative would allow you to do that documentary wouldn't. Yeah. That it would allow you to suss, you know, sort of explore and suss. And I find that to be a really interesting irony, how, how narrative can do that. Only because it gives you, the, the documentary I came from was a kind of hit and run method. Yeah, you know, it wasn't, right. it was what you can get. You know? Yes. It was not the setup documentary that you see so often now. Right. You know? right. So, I began to tire of, of waiting for things to happen. Right. I wanted to Bertie make them happen it. with you know certain light and gesture and aesthetic and all that. You know, so I so that's the great joy of making fiction is that anything that turns you on, you can put in the frame. You know, you from an actor to a painting. Do you think this this life in this village would have worked as a documentary, or do you think? No, I don't think documentary was even a path for him. I yeah. mean, he wanted to tell stories and. And he came from graphic design where, and, and advertising, which is also little stories. Yes. You know? And there's nothing, and he came from, I think his family was connected to even Rabindranath Tagore, and he came from a very cultured yes. uh, Arts and letters, yes. Uh, and uh, so I don't think it ever was a documentary that interested him. Right. The funny anecdote I was mentioning last week is that they sold, he sold his wife's jewels to make this film. Mm -hmm. He sold art books, records, and worst of all, yeah. or mo to signify his how wife, important... His yeah. wife sold them for him. I'm sure he yeah. wasn't doing his it under cover yet. No, no, meaning that uh, it's a solidarity was yes, also so right. deep, because right, right. Uh, in India, you know, you, uh, it used to be that a woman doesn't inherit, that the only the woman inherits only her jewelry. And jewelry was your coinage, that was yeah. it. And, yeah. um, and for her to do that, uh, it's it's profound, just, uh, she's, yeah. she, was an, uh, she is an amazing woman and who, without her, he would not be the rock he was, you know, because he, she was the rock, Fascinating. you know. She just ran everything for him. She was like a, the most graceful, graceful policewoman there was in terms of who came and who didn't come. And he just, and she just made his world happen so that he could 
just do his work, you know. Extraordinary. Yeah, I'm looking for a wife like that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes two of us, Mira. I, I remember when I was, we had written Salam Bombay and we had budgeted it and it came to about $860,000 um, in 1986, 87. And uh, I, ha I, I, I hid back the tears uh, <laughs> as I walked down Broadway because a friend of mine was doing this budget for me and I thought, how am I going to raise $860,000? You know, I'm 28 years old, no one knows me. I'm living here in New York, between India and the, uh, anyhow. And, and I, had, I had done five documentaries and the highest budget was $150,000. So I thought, how am I going to get 860? But I'm going to, get, you know, I just, and then I went to the new director's new films, this fantastic festival at Museum Modern Art. And in that year, uh, Hector Babenko was showing Peace Show, and Hector was there. And he uh, spoke, and I was there for two and a half hours after the film, just talking to him and hearing him about how he made this film. And when I left, I remember it was uh, late at night, and I was walking up 53rd and 5th, and I just knew that I, if he can do it in Brazil with nothing, I can do it. Even if I had 200,000 or whatever I had, I would do it. You know, and these, these are the people who give you the fire to make believe. And Ray, of course, gave me the fire by making his work and also by being accessible to me and, and listening to me and, and looking at the work. You once described uh the, the mise-en-scene of Salam Bombay is heightened photographic reality. So mm -hmm. you're really, you need the raw material of reality. Yeah. Do, you, do you find like that, even if you're yeah. working in the most fantastic uh, genre, do you yeah. feel like you're always synthesizing parts of your reality? Is that necessary for a filmmaker to, to do that? Well, you have to have an investment in every frame, yeah. I feel. You know, you yeah. have to, I really feel that. And sometimes I've not felt it. Right. It's like, you know, sometimes you're just doing something and you don't feel it. Yeah. And that's when you feel it more, that, you know, it is not what you, uh, it's, it's, you, you, you feel the difference when you feel invested and when you're not invested. Do you think about the future of your work in the sense of, who will think, this sounds a little dire, but do you, do you think, who will think about my work? Where, where do, no, Robert, what is, you're <laughs> dead if you think like that. Well, in the sense of, do you ever think of the legacy of your work? No. No. No, because if I did that, I wouldn't be working. And I, I, I really think it's uh, slightly egotistical to think like that. Uh, other people can think like that, well, you know, they can help yes. me out, but I, 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 uh, I don't feel, uh, I don't live in, I live in the present, you know, and I, everything I do, I, I like to, I'm really a yogi that way, you know, I have to live now, because if you live in the future or you live in the past, you're pretty screwed. <laughs>